everyone. Welcome back to another editing video with me, Sigourney from Sigourney Whitesell Studio. And today we're going to look into focus stacking your images to make sure everything that you need in frame is in a sharp focus as possible. So I'm starting off in Adobe Lightroom Classic. It's what I do all my global adjustments in. Um, I haven't quite moved over to Capture One yet. Um, I still really love the workflow of Lightroom to Photoshop. So it's where I'm sticking for now and it's how I'm going to show you how to focus stack. So this is the image we're going to work with today. It's a lovely um, sort of Christmas festive piece for the beauty crop. And I have all of these frames here. As you can see, I'm clicking across at the bottom. And what I've done is I have focused on sort of each individual product within the frame for this because when I was shooting, I think this is shot at f11, um, even though I'm a reasonable amount back from the products, the camera just couldn't quite capture everything on one plane view. So if I was stood even further back from the products at f11, I might have been able to get away with a couple of frames. However, just to be sure that everything is in sharp focus, I have gone ahead and focused different focus, uh, focal points within the frame. And we're going to merge those together to make sure everything is in sharp focus. Um, so I've made all my... Um, global and local adjustments um, as I want them. And I've copied those across all of these frames. There are 13 frames, um, you know, some might call it overkill, but I like to make sure that each pinpointed part um, becomes part of the focus stack because it means that everything is really, really tight. You don't have any sort of blurry, random areas of overlap. So hopefully this will work when I move it into Photoshop. So I've selected all of my frames, but I'll just show you how to do that again. So I've clicked on the first one, shift on windows, and then uh, click on the last frame that you want to add into Photoshop. We're going to right click, go to edit in and open as layers in Photoshop. Now this will just take a few minutes to load in, depends how fast your computer is, how big your files are. Uh, but we'll look, just let, uh, let it do this for the moment. Okay, I think we're all set and everything's loaded in. So as you can see, um, moving that from Lightroom Classic to Photoshop, we've now got all of these um, files in different layers. If I just zoom in, um, you can see that I started uh, shooting at the back of the image. And then as I click off, all these layers, you'll start to see the shift in focus between all the different frames. As you can see, that one sort of moved slightly over and um, that's either from me um, accidentally knocking the camera a little bit or just um, the, the lens itself sort of making that shift. I'm just gonna turn all these back on. Uh, ideally, you want to make sure that you cover each different plane um, so each different line of focus in your image. So sort of starting from this back corner, uh, you could even, you know, focus the background if you want that to be sharp as well, if you've got any detail. And then you just sort of pinpoint different areas and work your way down through the frame, sort of finishing on this bottom corner, which would be closest to the camera. Um, and again, you can always focus on the foreground as well. Uh, as I mentioned, we've got about 13 files here. So I am going to click on this top one um, click shift as I'm on windows and then click the bottom layer. We're then going to go up to edit. We're going to go to auto align layers and we're going to keep the projection at auto. You can use all of these different things for, you know, if you're doing landscape, um, doing perspective is quite good. Um, I haven't quite used some of these, but you know, they can create some really cool effects. It's well worth just giving it a go and um, and just having a play. But for these type of images, we're going to just keep it to auto and click OK. Now, what this will do um, is if you've had any sort of shift in movement, um, as I showed you, there was that sort of um, uh, sort of knock in the camera where they weren't quite aligned. This tool will help you align everything back in your image so it will match all the sort of square plinths together, um, sort of line up all of the products as long as you haven't purposely moved them within your frame. Again, it's also really important to make sure that you're using a tripod for this. 
Um, if you've got a really steady arm, then you're more than welcome to try this freehand. But it works its best potential when you're on a very solid, sturdy tripod. Uh, you haven't got anything that's going to move it and you're not going to knock it. You can think of it a bit like a stop motion animation um, in terms of that you need everything to be as precise as possible. So now if I click back through this, hopefully it should have aligned everything. So I'll just unclick all of these images and you can see there is no shift in the um, in the products or the set. Um, the only thing is there's a slight different uh, sort of amount of lighting that have sort of hit. Um, that's just sort of the internal exposure of the camera. Um, say if I've focused on uh, this lighter area compared to this darker area here, it will give you a slightly different um, exposure um, when you're firing the flash or, you know, using whatever lighting you have. Uh, so just be wary of that. Now we're going to move on to the actual focus stacking part. So again, I'm going to click on this top layer here. I'm going to click the shift key and I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom again, back up to edit. And then we're going to go to auto blend layers. So panorama, again, you could use it for landscape, sort of do a more continuous landscape looking scene. But we're going to go for stack images. Uh, we're going to keep seamless tones and colours uh, checked and also the content aware fill transparent areas. So we're going to keep stacked images selected and then click OK. Now, this is going to go through all of your different layers and it's going to start to, to piece them together and this tool literally finds the sharpest area in each image and uses that to mask everything together. At the end of this process, it creates you a brand new layer that has all of the sharpest details in. Sometimes it can be a bit finicky and not provide you with the sharpest areas, but you can go back into each individual layer and sort of play with the bits that you want to be in focus. So I'll show you what I mean. So as you can see here, it's just created a new layer, the very top, which has been very lovely and pieced together all of the sharpest parts of my image. As you can see in this area here, it hasn't quite caught it. Obviously, something's been knocked and it's not the cleanest of uh, focus stacks. Uh, again here it looks fine on this block you can see here it's picked another little bit of an area uh, but it's not a problem so what we can do here is unclick this top layer which is the new layer that photoshop has created and we will just go back in um, if i untick all of these areas you can see that each uh, frame has its own layer mask and Photoshop has picked out all of the sharpest areas that they think is in focus. And it looks a bit weird. You get the idea. Um, it sort of picks everything out that's on that same plane view that's in sharpest focus. And it pieces everything together. So this is the base layer. Let's now just click it all back in and start to reveal what Photoshop thought the final thing should be. Okay. Um, so in this area here, we can click back through and see where it's sort of taken it from. Here we go. So on this layer, we can go back into the layer mask and using the brush tool uh, by clicking B on your computer or, you know, clicking the brush tool in the corner. Um, just gonna see here we go so as you can see i'm clicked on this layer mask and i can paint back in to this area i believe i might use the marquee tool just to see There we go. So we've just already created this realignment here. Um, so you can use the brush tool, but sometimes it's just a bit easier to use your marquee tool 
and sort of delete um, using the black and white uh, paint swatches tool uh, to turn on and off the layer mask. This is the area of problem for this one. So again, in the other mask, I'm just going to delete that and see where we find a nice alignment. So I'm just gonna have a play. And that's sort of lined back up that side. Let's see about this one. There we go, we're lined back up there. And again, it just takes a little bit of finessing uh, to make sure everything is where we want it to be. So you can start to add and remove the bits that you don't want from each image. And just make sure everything is as sharp as possible. Again, this area here isn't the best for this little area. Uh, but that one's probably easier to fix with uh, some more post-production. Now we need to understand where this little chunk comes in so it lines up. There we go. So that now that's more aligned. As you can see, it's picked out bits of the layer that aren't exactly the same color. I'll just paint this back in with the brush tool. And then let's see if we can paint back in the underneath bits. And then paint back out this area here. So it's a lot of trial and error. It's a lot of, you know, being really finicky with uh, with your image, uh, making sure you're not missing any of these because sometimes you can focus stack and blend them all together and start working on um, start working on an image and it doesn't quite meet your expectations and then you have to start all over again. So it's it, not normally that fun when that happens. But as you can see, that is now basically lined everything up and got the sharpest version of each frame that I wanted. So I'm going to delete that one that uh, Photoshop created and I'm going to create a folder. So I'm going to select all of the frames, drag it into the folder icon at the bottom. I'm going to duplicate this just so I don't lose any data. And then I'm going to right click on the group and merge the group. And then I will start my normal, uh, you know, uh, retouching by duplicating that layer to make sure that that layer stays intact and then we can start to you know go back into these details uh, that weren't as perfect I'm just going to use the uh, removal tool and hopefully find everything up here um, and you can just start to do everything as normal and work towards your final image so that is photo stacking obviously it is a little bit more complex there's a lot of variations on how you can do things um but this way you know you have control over the different layers if it hasn't matched anything quite perfectly um and you know you can make the decision whether you want to um, go back into all the layers and fix it manually or if you want to wait until everything is merged together and you can just start retouching as normal and treat it as if it was you know straight out of camera so i hope that helps if you've got any questions i know, I know focus stacking is quite a, a finicky subject um but obviously we are happy to help so drop us a you know a message on instagram or comment on the video and i'm sure we'll get back to you as soon as possible bye